As of late, Clemson football has become a factory in terms of producing good college football quarterbacks. It started with a lot of consistency from Taj Boyd, they saw historical success with Deshaun Watson, and they now have the likely number one overall pick in this year's draft and former high school prodigy Trevor Lawrence, and DJ Uangale is up next. Those guys are all iconic, but who are some of the other good quarterbacks who have come through Clemson's rich football history? Well, today we're going to talk about the top 10 quarterbacks in school history, their careers, and what eventually happened to all of them. But first, before we get started, be sure to give the video a like if you want to support what I'm doing here on YouTube, subscribe if you love college football content, suggest another team or topic I should do next, and be sure to turn on post notifications to get notified every time I upload. Now let's get started and talk about what happened to the top 10 quarterbacks in Clemson football history. As a disclaimer, I'm just going by the quarterbacks with the most career passing yards for this list and the order, so that is my justification for how I rank these guys. Coming in at number 10, we have Steve Fuller. Fuller played from 1975 to 1978 and was the best quarterback of the 70s for the Tigers. He was born in Oklahoma, but became a high school football star in Spartanburg, South Carolina. He chose to stay home and take his football talents to Clemson, and as a freshman, he threw a few passes and also caught some passes as well. As a sophomore, he played backup quarterback and also played running back, and the dude did a little bit of everything it seemed. He was a starter in 1977 and accounted for 16 total touchdowns. As a senior, he accounted for 17 touchdowns and led the Tigers to an 11-1 record, and he finished 10th in school history in passing yards with 4,201 and passed for 22 career touchdowns. Those numbers don't definitely pop off the charts, but he was taken in the first round of the 1979 NFL Draft by the Kansas City Chiefs, but he's obviously best known for being the backup for the Bears when they won a Super Bowl. He is seen as one of the better backup quarterbacks in NFL history and is now the offensive coordinator for Hilton Head High School in South Carolina. Pretty cool. At number 9, we have Rodney Williams, who is pretty underrated in my opinion. He still holds the school record for most games won by a quarterback with 32, and at the time, he set Clemson career records for most passing completions, most passing yards, and most consecutive passes without an interception, plus games completing a pass and most games started by a quarterback. He was the most valuable player in, in both the 1988 Citrus Bowl and the 1986 Gator Bowl. As a starter, he led Clemson to four straight bowl games, three ACC championships, and three bowl victories. He's the only Tiger to ever do that in the school's history, and I'd say that's pretty good. He is now a color commentator with Clemson Tiger Network, and I would say he had a pretty decorated college football career. At number 8, we have Kyle Parker, who was the first main quarterback for Dabo Sweeney's Clemson football era. Parker was an absolute star coming out of high school, as he was both a blue-chip football and baseball recruit. He was a borderline 5-star quarterback, and even threw the game-winning touchdown pass in the Army All-American game, and he was also a first-team All-State player in baseball as well. He committed to Clemson, and would get a chance to play pretty soon. He redshirted in 2008 and would win the starting job in 2009. He finished the season completing 25 of 369 passes for 2,256 yards with 20 touchdowns and 12 interceptions. He was a second team freshman All-American and the first freshman quarterback to take his team to a conference championship game. He was alright in 2010 and the Tigers would have a down year, but football was never his first priority it seemed, which is honestly just crazy. He was spectacular in baseball at Clemson as he was a first team freshman All-American and was actually so incredibly talented that he was drafted in the first round of the MLB draft by the Colorado Rockies in 2010. He decided to pursue baseball full time and would be in their farm league system for a while and he would actually make his major league debut in 2014 but it didn't last long and after that he got a brief stint with the Cincinnati Reds farm system but by 2016 he was out of the league. I think the biggest what if about Kyle Parker is if he actually pursued football full time, but we will never know, but he was solid in his two years there. At number 7 we have Neil on Green, who played for a while. Born in Yonkers, New York, he became a big time high school football player and was actually recruited by a Clemson coach from the area as well, so he'd eventually commit to the Tigers to continue his football career. He played for four years at Clemson, and I cannot find a ton of info out there about him, but he did beat arch rival South Carolina on the road twice, but actually never beat them at home, and by the time he left school, he had established a new school record for passing yards. After his time at Clemson, he went to the CFL, where he had a nice eight-year career and had some pretty memorable moments there, and broke a few records. After that, he returned to Clemson to finish school, and in an interview, he is now doing a lot of good for the community and trying to bring up others. I have to applaud him for that and I wish for nothing but success for those programs. He left Clemson as the best quarterback in school history to that point, and it seems like he is on a great path in life and has made the most of his influence. At number six, we have Colin Harper, and just like Kyle Parker, Harper was a baseball player as well. He was brought up in the Georgia high school football system and was the number one quarterback in his state. 
He chose to commit to Tommy Bowden and Clemson and redshirted his first year on campus. In 2005 and 2006, he saw limited action as a backup quarterback, but did show some flash. In 2007, Harper began his run as a two-year starter at Clemson. He broke 28 school records while passing for 3,014 yards and throwing 27 touchdowns to just six interceptions, and he was a second-team All-ACC guy only because Matt Ryan was first team from Boston College. He was also the recipient of the Banks McFadden Award, which goes to the top player in the state of South Carolina. In 2008, he was voted preseason ACC Player of the Year and a first-team All-ACC guy, as he threw for 2,661 yards and 13 touchdowns, while leading the ACC in passing yards, touchdowns, and completion percentage. He was invited to the Senior Bowl and the Combine, but he didn't see a whole lot of NFL success, as after he went to the Buffalo Bills training camp and didn't make it, he went back to Clemson and became an oral surgeon, apparently. And that's a pretty cool career, and I'd say this guy's pretty underrated, as I had actually never heard of him before I made today's video. We are now halfway through today's video, so please be sure to guess the top five who are left. Give the video a like if you want to support what I'm doing here, and subscribe if you have not already. Now let's get into the last half. At number five, we have one of the more cool names I have heard of in college football in Woodrow Dantzler. He was born and raised in Orangeburg, South Carolina, and by the time he was a senior, he was an All-American and a big-time recruit. He chose to take the offer from Clemson, and he came in in 1998. He was a great player, and in 2000, he set the ACC record for rushing yards in a game against Virginia, and would also help them win a thrilling game against arch-rival South Carolina. In 2001, he rushed for 1,075 yards and 13 touchdowns, and he became the first player in NCAA football history to pass for more than 2,000 yards and rush for more than 1,000 yards in a single season, and only the third player to pass for more than 5,000 and rush for more than 2,500 in a career. He would finish his college career passing for 5,819 yards, 37 touchdowns, and 24 picks, while also rushing for 2,704 yards and 27 touchdowns. He held 53 school records at the time and was the all-time passing yards leader. He was a Clemson Hall of Famer and despite being spectacular, went undrafted in the 2002 NFL Draft. The highlight of his professional career came when he returned a kickoff for a touchdown, but he did not see a ton of long-term success and eventually played for NFL Europe in three other leagues before he would retire. I would honestly never heard of him before, but it seems like this guy was an absolute legend. At number 4, we have the guy that all of us college football fans should recognize in Charlie Whitehurst. He was born in Green Bay, Wisconsin, but moved to Georgia where he developed into a blue chip recruit and chose to play for Tommy Bowden at Clemson. 21 touchdowns with only 3 interceptions, but unfortunately his pick numbers would go up tremendously. In 2004, he would lead the offense again, but struggled. He passed for 2,067 yards and 7 touchdowns with 17 interceptions. I had to reread that. He also did have one punt for 25 yards and a 2 yard catch. Despite not being super efficient, he started as a senior and threw for 2,483 yards and 11 touchdowns compared to 10 interceptions. For some reason, he was seen as an NFL quarterback and was drafted in the third round by the San Diego Chargers. He was a journeyman NFL backup as he spent time with the Chargers, Seahawks, Titans, Colts, and Browns, and he was most known for his nickname of Clipboard Jesus. Whitehurst was super iconic and I definitely need to do a video on him someday. Now we get into the quarterbacks of the Dabo era. Trevor Lawrence may be the most talented quarterback in Tiger history as he grew up in Tennessee but became a high school prodigy in Cartersville, Georgia. Because Mark Rick didn't heavily recruit him at first, he eventually followed into Sean Watson's footsteps and chose to go to Clemson. He arrived as the backup to Kelly Bryant, but eventually beat him out a few games into the year, and as a freshman, he became a star. He led them to the national title, and they blew the rails off of Alabama in the title game. He came back in 2019 and had a pretty good year, but he didn't put up the numbers that many thought he would, and some thought he wasn't as efficient as he could have been. He helped them beat Ohio State in a thrower in the college football playoff when it mattered, though, but they did lose to Joe Burrow's LSU Tigers in the title game. In 2020, he helped bring college football back with the We Wanna Play movement and battled a ton of positive tests over the year, but he did lead them to an ACC title game where they would get into the playoff once again, but his career would come to an end at the hands of Justin Fields in Ohio State. He finished with 10,098 yards and 90 touchdowns as a Clemson Tiger, and will more than likely be the number one overall pick in the 2021 NFL Draft to Urban Meyer and the Jacksonville Jaguars. If Trevor Lawrence chose a different school, we'd be saying that Deshaun Watson is the most talented quarterback ever to come through Clemson, but he is a good second option. Plus, we don't even know who will end up being better. Deshaun Watson was a big-time quarterback recruit and was considered a five-star by pretty much every recruiting site and broke numerous Georgia high school football records. He set the record for total yards, total touchdowns, career passing yards, and career passing touchdowns, and the guy was a, and the guy was a beast. He chose to commit to Clemson and would have had and would have to beat out Cole Stout for the starting job his freshman year. He played on and off and battled injuries, but by the time he was a sophomore, he had become a star. 
They went undefeated, but they lost a close one to Bama in the title game, but he would get his revenge in 2016 as he helped them get back to the title game where he threw a game-winning pass to Hunter Renfro, and they got a ring. After throwing for over 10,000 career yards, he declared for the NFL Draft and was taken by the Houston Texans. He has so far led them to two playoff appearances and has become one of the best in the NFL, but he has been stuck in dysfunction with the franchise and we don't know where he'll be playing this fall. Coming in at number one, we have Taj Boyd. He was the first superstar quarterback Dabo recruited to Clemson, but he almost didn't go there. After becoming a high school football star, he originally committed to Tennessee, but he would later flip to the Tigers. Boyd took over as a starter in 2011 the ACC Championship along the way, where they would play West Virginia in the Orange Bowl, where they get historically blown out. During his second year as a starter in 2012, he helped the Tigers to an 11-2 record, throwing for 3,896 yards, 36 touchdowns, and 13 picks, and he also had the then ACC record for touchdowns in a game against NC State. As a senior in 2013, the Tigers won 11-2, Boyd throwing for 3,851 yards, 34 touchdowns, and 11 picks. Towards the end of that year, he had set the ACC record for career passing touchdowns as well, and the guy was a legend. He finished his Clemson career with a school record for passing yards with 11,904 and passing touchdowns with 107. He is currently the all-time leader in both of those categories, and I don't know if we'll ever get someone to get to that point. He never got a shot in the NFL really, and as of now, he owns a few places and enjoys life. That's it. That is the top 10 quarterbacks in Clemson history according to passing yards, and what do you guys think? Also, let me know what school I should do next, and I want to know who the best Clemson quarterback is ever, and who will see the most NFL success. I really enjoyed making today's video, and if you enjoyed it as well, please be sure to show your support with a like, subscribe if you love college football, suggest what school or topic I should do next, and be sure to check out all my other videos on the end screen, including my video about what happened to Cole Stout. Hope to see you guys again soon, but until next time, peace. <laughs>